Hey guys, Tim here, Big Dog Forge. Welcome back to the shop. This time, part three of the splint lap made from the wrought iron sent to us by Roy Adams from Christ Centered Ironworks. I wanted to really thank Roy for uh, including me in this little project. It's been a lot of fun, and uh, this video should wrap up the three part series. So enjoy, and we'll see you at the other end. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, this is where we finished up last time. We finished all the components. Time to start working on the base. Now this is what we have left over out of the block. It's about an inch thick by about an inch and a half at one and kind of tapers down a little bit. That's a piece of 3 16 and this is a piece of 5 8 inch round bar. What we're hoping to do here is get a piece 5 8 inches wide and about 3 16 thick. We're probably going to have to go a little thinner than that. We need two pieces out of this. One about 12 inches long and the other one almost nine inches long. So we're looking to get 21, 22 inches out of this thing and it's gonna be a bit of a stretch to try to get that. We may have to take it down a little thinner or a little narrower than we want to. But once we get close, we'll figure that out. Alrighty, so we're forging it a little hotter because these pieces are pretty much flat. I'm not gonna do any tapering and I've decided not to scroll the ends of the feet. They're simply gonna be flat feet to save material. All right, we're gonna cut that into two pieces. The short one there being the single leg coming out the front, we will forge it first. And then the other two thirds of that will be the cross leg for the other two legs of the tripod. These sections are going to be riveted together eventually and it looks like our welds getting ready to break so you notice I've got my piece of brass back under there to take these down to eighth inch I didn't take them quite that thin they're a little uh, proud of that they're just a hair under three sixteenths but we did go five eighths inch wide And we plenished them out real nice. And we didn't have any cracking problems at all with this. But with those flat dies on the power hammer, tend not to have too many problems. All right, so we got the length out of our first leg. And that weld just snapped off. And now this piece, we need to draw this out to about 12 inches. 12 and a half. So what we're going to do is this will be straight across the back it will bend down two inches and then out one inch on either end the leg in the front will come straight out it will bend down two inches and then one inch straight out the front as a foot so we'll have three points of contact being our tripod and we'll put an offset and you'll see it here in a second and put an offset in that front leg so it fits. I didn't film that. Those are our marks where we're going to bend it. So we're going three inches here. We'll just bend it over and get it as close as we can. We'll fine tune this later. And we'll get it back into the forge. We'll heat up the end and we're measuring out one inch there. And that will be our front foot. And like I said, we'll get a chance to do some uh, fine tuning here in a bit. We're going to do something that's probably a little unconventional for most of you. You, I, you may or may not have seen this before in wrought iron work. It's something my mentor used to do. And he did a lot of uh, iron and uh, cast iron and wrought iron restoration on small items. And uh, he had a trick that he used to use. To save himself and to save the pieces and parts and I'm going to use it to uh, get this put together because I really don't want any failures and it's sort of an insurance policy and I'll show you what that is here in a second and really I don't know if he came up with it or if uh, it comes from some older tradition but uh, it's just ingenious so and it's going to, like I said, it's going to save me on this project because I've had to forge the parts so fine that uh, it's just going to help out. 
All right, now this is our back leg, and it's just going to T intersection with our front leg. There we go, just like that. We're going to get this guy over to the grinder, and we're going to do a little cleanup in a section in the very center of that. What we're just making sure our legs are the right length on all three pieces looks good all right there we go so i'm finding center i'm doing this on the top and then we'll put our center leg there either side and then on the back side of this we're just going to clean off the scale down to nice clean wrought iron Alrighty, and we'll clean off our offset on our tab just like that. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to give myself a good center line so I have a good reference point there. We're going to do a pre assembly on this guy so that we can fit all the other parts. And what we're going to do is take a little piece of silver solder and we're going to silver solder this thing together before we rivet it because there's a lot of fitting to do and we need this guy put together but I can't put a rivet in it until I get the bottom of the splint lamp itself ready to go in there. This will all become clear here in a second. So what we're going to do is just get that in the front of the forge and we'll let it, let it sit for a couple of minutes and just before it turns sort of a cherry red that's that uh, silver solder will melt into place and we'll let that cool real quick and get it into some water and cool it off there we go so now I can uh, do the rest of my fittings and and measurements without having to try to put that thing together somehow we're going to do a uh, ash pan typically the ash pan on these things would have been made from tin or wrought iron or iron of some sort um, I have seen some of them that had a brass or bronze ash pan on them they're typically a little higher end and I have that and I do not have enough wrought iron to make an ash pan out of so we're going to do this and what this does is it uh, catches the ashes off the splints that burn so you don't get burning embers falling on your table. And we use the old Boyce Crane bandsaw that we redid here and I'm having to take several relief cuts because I've got a half inch wide blade on this thing. I need to get a little narrower blade so I can contour a little easier with it. That bandsaw is working really well. All right, we're just going to clean up the edges of this real quick. Get the shape a little nicer. All right. That's going to fit right there. So we'll clean it up with a little sandpaper, get rid of the marks from the uh, bandsaw. Give it a little bit of a finish. All right, we're going to take this little piece of rounded wood and we're going to give it a lip. This lip is just to catch and hold the ashes that fall off the splint at the top of the lamp. It's pretty traditional. It's a pretty traditional shape. All right, now you saw our trick with the silver solder on the tripod. Now we have to get rivets through several pieces while holding these pieces together. So what we're going to do, and this is something my mentor taught me. I got a few cracks here and there. This is why we don't want to be beating on this thing. We want to try to save it as best we can without punching and drifting and you know riveting through this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a, an assembly um, in a very particular fashion with some silver solder and then we're going to drill the holes and put the rivets through those holes and then we'll head them that way and it'll keep us from having to uh, try to 
hold all these pieces in place while we hot rivet this thing and uh, try to keep it all lined up. And the silver solder will serve a couple of purposes. It'll hold it together while we rivet it, but after it's riveted, these joints only have one rivet in them. And should the rivet ever loosen, these pieces will be subject to rotating or rattling, moving around. Um, and what it'll do is it'll just hold things in place, ensuring that it stays together. So I've seen others use uh, brazing techniques to put small parts on um, sculptures, things like that. And um, it works really well. But we're going to use this as an assembly technique for this thing because we have so many parts. And I think it'll really help us out here. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to groove just big enough to hold a piece of silver solder. And that'll sort of act as a keyway. That silver solder will grab the opposing piece and sit in that groove and keep those pieces aligned. So if the rivet ever does loosen for whatever reason, they won't rotate around that rivet. You know, some of these pieces are on a spring and they move and you put pressure on them. So this is a little insurance and an assistant to hold it together while we get it put together. And it works pretty well. I've done this before on a couple of other projects. Always with ornamental type stuff like this. And we're using the old modern die grinder. It's a little bit quicker than me trying to file each one of these out with a, with a uh, triangular file and spending that time. And honestly, I just don't have the time to spend to do those sorts of things. Sorry about the focus here. I got out of focus for a couple of minutes. And, uh, yeah, but I think you can see what's going on here well enough. So you see me putting paste flux on there. It gets down into the groove and it holds a little piece of wire in place while I'm putting these pieces together. And you see me drop that piece of wire in that little groove. Now we've got four individual pieces that will be stacked up here. We've got the main upright, the two scrolls, and then our spring. And all four of those pieces we would normally have to hold together after we punched holes through them. And these pieces, honestly, with this particular wrought iron, it would be next to impossible to punch holes in these without uh, cracking the sides out or you know causing other issues and I just don't want to take the chance to be honest there's a lot of work into this and this is going to save me it'll hold it all together like I said and I'll be able to drill a hole and get the rivets in there and we just go until we see the silver solder just appear out the uh, cracks and that's something that we'll be able to file down later and uh, you'll never see this over solder. And this is our trigger scroll that's on the back of the spring. We use that to pull the spring back to put a new splint in. enough heat in there to let that silver solder melt and adhere to both sides real well. There we go. And that's our trigger. Okay. And we have our splint holder and the handle for the lamp to put on. And I really can't say enough about this pre-assembly method. I could not even imagine, you know, being a guy who works in a soul shop, one-man band, 
being able to assemble this thing without uh, an extra set of hands of some sort or some technique like this. And I really do think that that's why my, uh, my teacher came up with this method or learned it from wherever he learned it. was because he was a one-man shop and he did a lot of this uh, restoration on very small items. All right, we're going to bend this handle up and out of the way so that we can get in there and get our rivet put through these three pieces. All right. There we go. You can still see some silver solder on there, but that'll disappear soon. There's our pan and our base and the pieces that we have left over from the whole project. And we started off with 4.001 pounds. Let's see what we have left. 2.988 pounds. We lost an entire pound of material to scale. And we got enough of this left. I think I can get some rivets out of it. Very honestly, what happened was this is the only rivet that I actually got out of it. Trying to forge it down that small, every one of them split. That's the only existing one that I had. And what I ended up doing was I created two more. I need a total of three. I created two of them out of mild steel. And it's just the way it is. Just couldn't keep them uh, hot enough to forge them into shape. And the ones that I could, the scale just ate them up. So the one at the very bottom is wrought iron. The other two are mild steel. So it is what it is. All right. There's our wrought iron rivet. And this thing being held together like it is, is going to make this so much nicer. And of course we use a torch to keep these nice and hot. I would not suggest um, this brazing method or silver soldering method on any kind of a large project. If you're doing a, a gate project or a a window screen or a fireplace screen, something like that. Um, I would suggest you find some other method to hold it together. This works really well for very small items, very small projects. Um, I think that it would get messy and it would affect the construction of something larger. I built a little rivet with an offset head for this one because we were very close with our hole to the splint holder itself. So I had to build a little offset head on that rivet. It wasn't too difficult to do. This one happens to be mild steel, so I had a couple of shots of it out of it. Oak. And it was a little bit of fidgeting around. This old nail header worked really well as a backer for this. And it was a little bit of a tight spot between those scrolls and all that stuff. I didn't want to bend that upper scroll out of the way too far. I was afraid of getting some cracks in it or, uh, you know breaking it off and after all the work that's gone into this that's <laughs> I just didn't want that to happen alrighty this is our last rivet through the spring and the trigger scroll And I would suggest if you're going to do any wrought iron work at all, 
if you're going to put it into a knife, you're going to forge weld it to Damascus. If you're going to do anything like that, um, that works very well in a propane forge with the right heat. If uh, you're going to do something ornamental like this, um, I would suggest a coal forge, uh, a solid fuel forge of some sort, uh, charcoal, coke, something like that. Uh, you're going to get a much better result. You're going to be able to work it at the proper heat a lot easier with a lot less scale if you build a good neutral fire. But it can be done. All right, we're going to file some of this silver solder off these joints so we can make them look nice and pretty. I'm going to take any sharp edges off the uh, twists and bends and scrolls. Just pretty it up a little bit. And make sure our rivets are perfect. Alrighty. There we go. And we need to drill a hole in this so we can rivet it. Unfortunately, I didn't turn the camera on for any of that. And I realized it wasn't on when I started riveting this. And uh, we only missed one heat on the, this rivet. So we're into the second heat, heating it up here by the time I turn the camera on. So we're still adjusting the ash pan and the tripod. So... And to be honest, I did that in a couple of areas on these videos um, because I was in such a hurry to get all this done with my limited time. That's something I'm going to have to stop doing. I need to start uh, taking my time with these projects, but I need to get a balance going there. If I take too much time, it'll be months between videos. And I don't want to do that either, so... We'll figure it out. All right, we're going to warm this guy up with a torch and we're going to get some beeswax on him. Down on the pan and all the scrolls. Something to protect the iron. Got a fan going there to blow all that smoke away. All right, guys, that's what we started with. And here's what we've got. All right, guys, there you go. So uh, thanks for stopping by. Really do appreciate it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with this one. And again, I wanted to thank Roy at Christ Centered Iron Works for supplying the wrought iron and the um, challenge, I guess you might call it, to get something done out of that piece of wrought iron. And uh, I think it came out okay. I like it. And uh, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with it. Why don't you guys leave me a comment. Let me know what you think I should do with this thing. And... Uh, I wanted to thank all you folks who have been tuning in. We're close to 25,000 subscribers. Actually, we're about eight, 900 away, something like that. And uh, hey, why don't you think about being one? When we get to 25,000 subscribers, I think we'll do a giveaway. Anyway, um, thanks guys. Appreciate you stopping by. If you like what you saw, click the like button. If um, you yeah, are not a subscriber, why don't you go ahead and do that and uh, share the videos because sharing is good. 
lots of people would like to see this video and you could share it and show them yeah big dog forge <laughs> all right guys anyway so uh, share the videos if you think about it and leave a comment it's always good when you leave a comment uh, I read all of them I get back to a few of them it's just a matter of time for me and so anyway I appreciate everything guys thank you so much and for all you patrons out there got something coming up soon for you guys so anyway thanks guys take care be safe and we'll see you next time right here at Big Dog Forge bye bye now <laughs>